Welcome back, Polygoners! I am Shaft, you're watching Hope Team League. This is our final match of our Round Robin series. It's a little bit of a pre-show, and as you may have noticed from our last game, one of our casters had to dip out real quick. He should be back. He's on a phone call. But in the meantime, I will be uh, taking over the cast. I just want to give another big shout out to Crave Jerky, our sponsors of this event, as well as Dagor, who helps provide some of the funding for the event. Dagor, of course, is a Reddit admin, so please go visit r slash Starcraft and contribute to that community. It is an amazing community that needs all the positivity it can get. Meanwhile, we are going to be hopping into um, our next game on Acolyte Sluggy. If you uh, want to tell the audience a little bit about your thoughts on Acolyte and how it relates to the ZVP matchup that we're about to be seeing, the ground is yours. Right, ZVP in Acolyte. It's no. Usually, people might think that Zerg might like it because of the safety uh, base you can take. But actually, this is a map that Zerg players hate because the Pro does has such an easier time uh, because of that. Yes, uh, man. Taking the back base now. Naturally, this would mean that it's actually one of the few maps that's actually okay for the Protoss players to go into carriers. Not yeah. a lot of maps that encourage that. So yeah. based on that, the Protoss is going to have an easier time, but we'll have to see how this game plays out. Yeah, I mean, I think most players in this matchup know that it really revolves around the fifth and sixth gas, and then of course the seventh and eighth gas for the Protoss. As the game goes longer, it's harder and harder for Protoss to secure gas, and gas, of course, is so critical to what they have to try and do. Now, that said, we are getting into this game here on the top right-hand side of Acolyte Lather Edition. He is our purple Zergy McFerguson playing for Nocturnal Gamers. It's Zinnar! Spawning the bottom left is from Psystorm Gaming. Uh, no, sorry, Psionic Aftermath. It's Kingslayer. Yeah, man, Psystorm Gaming. That's not until uh, about an hour from now in the finals of the main event. So, very similar names, though. Can't. Uh, so, okay. All right, we're getting into the very early nitty gritty here, and it looks like pretty much any standard ZV piece. Luggy, talk to me about this. Like, are you seeing anything that, that deviates this? No, pretty much nothing is um, <laughs> happening that is deviating. Usually, like sometimes, the Protoss player would actually take the front base uh, that is down at the bottom mm -hmm. and actually make a SimCity there so you can have a much easier third, but that won't seem uh, to be the case. Now, the most important thing is the next tech structure for Protoss. It's either going to be a Stargate, but we can eliminate that because the first unit is the Stalker. Clearly, he wants to hide what kind of uh, funky build order he wants to have. Mm -hmm. uh, that's why he's making a Stalker to prevent any Overlord Scouts. And on top of that, he is making a Robo with yeah. Twilight. Robo, Twilight? Is this like some kind of Adept Immortal thing? Uh, Adept Immortal, not really. I mean, that's been in fashion in the very early stages of Legacy Void. We haven't seen that build for uh, such a long time. And that is mm -hmm. because the Hydras are buffed. So. Yeah. Uh, Probably unlikely. However, I can predict that the first unit that the observ uh, the Robo will make is a Warp Prism. And if I'm wrong, kill me. All right. What 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 kind of blunt instrument should I use? Um, first just... unit, immortal bitches. <laughs> okay, so it's going to be an immortal charge attack. Uh, most likely, the third base won't be uh, considered anytime soon. Uh, however, the Immortal, if it's stockpiled, it's going for a very strong time, uh, attack timing. And mm -hmm. to prepare for that, additional gateways are being made. Yeah, well, we've got some Lings actually parked outside what could be the fourth base of Zenador, uh, of Kingslayer. Zenador poking up this ramp. Does see that the third base has not been taken. It's probably going to us um, you know, both of the, the interior bases are taken. The Stalker is, of course, scouted. So what's all this information really going to tell Zinador? And is he making the correct reaction in going through these main lines? Well, he sees... Uh, I'm, by now, I'm suspecting that Zinador is going for a rather cheesy kind of a player. Yeah. Uh, he sees six mm -hmm. lanes, and at this timing, it's a little bit weird. He needs to have the Mothership up. Uh, but, yeah, the lanes are in. 
uh, it's so important that he needs the mothership core right now. The immortals aren't gonna do much, and he really needs to split those bros. Oh, but uh, oh, so far man. he's doing so good, but uh, he needs to block that wall. Yeah, there's been some really good bailing hits here on the probes. We've had about eight probes killed, but this has been a huge investment by Xenador. Uh, Xenador does manage to kill off most of the army, and some of these lanes um, that were focused on these buildings are getting the into the middle line, and that is going to be a GG uh, be for Kingslayer. So Xenador has shown himself using some really incredibly aggressive, um, like you said, cheesy tactics, but uh, with this kind of greed, like... Let's face it, um, two interior bases, fast Twilight Council, fast Robo. How many, like, initially he only had, like, one gate with all that? Like, that almost seemed kind of greedy, like, greedier than it should have been. It's not actually greedy. It's actually uh, actually contrary to being greedy. It was going for a strong two-base opening. Mm -hmm. uh, we can tell that it was a two-base opening, uh, two-base yeah. two lint, because instead of yeah. getting the Nexus... We saw not economically greedy, technology, technologically greedy, like skipping the extra gateways. He just didn't have enough defenses. He literally did not have enough units on the field. Well, I'm not sure what you mean by technologically greedy. He had when you, when you take too much gas. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Uh, I'm not sure what you mean by technologically greedy because he had Twilight and Robo. Uh, exactly. but the problem is that the reason why. Uh, Protoss players don't really go for that Robo, like Robo as the first mm -hmm. unit kind of attack is because uh, mm -hmm. before Roaches were popular, Roach Ravager was popular, mm -hmm. so Immortal was a counter to that. But they yeah. don't go with Roaches anymore. They go with uh, Hydra Ling Bane, and right. Immortals aren't good at any uh, against those units as we have seen in the past. So you think majority of that was unit decision? The fact that he had gone for Immortal? Well, absolutely. I think uh, if he went. For an adept all in, I think that would have been better because adepts could actually hold against uh, yeah. Lin Bane all attacks. And of course, he skipped the mothership core without any scouting. That right. was a bit of a yeah. So I think I think we're agreeing. I think maybe it's just that term technologically greedy because that's what I'm referring to, like not getting the mothership core, having fewer gateways, which therefore means fewer adepts or gateway units in general. Going for the robo and like. Those sorts of things. I think uh, I think we're basically on the same page there. We are going to be getting into our next game, but for the moment, we're going to be having a kind word from our sponsors, who are Crave Jerky. Please visit them on Twitter at Crave Jerky hashtag uh, Jerky Love hashtag Jerky Love. Please let them know how much you love the fact that they are supporting esports. We'll be right back. If you want to be notified when we release videos like this, please make sure you hit the subscribe button. If you don't know where that is, I'm not going to teach you how to use the internet. There's probably no hope for you.